I was brought in as, as a cub hmm. out of minor and I thought, oh, you've just been brought in to, to be brought around the yeah. place. And, and I remember Paddy McNamee was a selector and he was bringing me to the game and he says, oh, you'll see time. I was shitting it. <laughs> I was up in the car. I said, see time? I said, what are you talking about? Hi there, you're very welcome along to the GR with me, Darren O'Sullivan. We have a bank holiday weekend, loads of football, loads of rain and Kerry. The All-Ireland champions are out. I'm delighted to be joined today by Kevin's Keen Mackey and Tyrone's Kyle Coney. Keen, you're obviously very happy. Kyle, not so much. Keen, all yeah, good? Good good weekend and, and look, as we were expected to win the game, but as I said previously on the show, they're the games we over the years we've struggled with. We got a great start. I think it was one three no score. So some start. Ha- ha- happy, happy men this weekend. And Kyle, uh, a couple of glum faces above in Tyrone. I'm sure this morning. Yeah, but not just as a, on a positive note like like Kane there, but yeah. um, we're a bit more doom and gloom up in Tyrone here today. Now, and unfortunately, we've we haven't backed up our season from from last year. We, we've fallen short. We've fallen victim to the curse again, where we can't follow up the, the previous year's all Ireland so it's it's a bit of a a bit of an unexpected exit but yeah, that's where we are at the minute. Yeah, I suppose going into the game you kind of always kinda of half expected this Tyrone team to just kind of get going. I suppose you always expect them to kick into gear and you mentioned the curse there, Kyle and Sean Kavanagh was trying to give the team he played in a couple of excuses before the game and how this group had no excuses but Genuinely, I actually think that the seven players they've lost to start the year has come back to bite him, Keen. Just the lack of quality probably in the squad has cost them. Yeah, like it, it's huge when you when you when you lose a bulk of players like that. It takes away from we'll say the camaraderie mm. within the dressing, like everyone questioning why are they going, and it brings too much heat around the panel. It was great last year under the radar, no one talking about them. They went about their business. They won the All Ireland. Now lost a couple of players which would have hurt the panel and everyone talking about it. So it was a lot of pressure on them. And and maybe, look, at, there was lads that weren't starting that possibly could have started, but that could be injuries like Sean Kavanagh or, or boys outside the squad don't know it. Like, yeah. do you know, like McGeary, player of the year last year, he must have had a niggle not to start. Like So like him playing for 70 minutes would have been a huge boost. Colin McShane must have had a niggle, you know, would have suited him brilliantly in there. But... Look, we, we don't know the ins and outs of what's going on inside the panel. Kyle might know a wee bit more, but in general, county panels, if they're any good at all, nothing really comes out, you know. Yeah, and Kyle, Tyrone actually got a good start. They actually started, they looked lively. And Conor McKenna got the first goal of the game. You're thinking, right, this is it now. And for some reason, they just didn't kick on. And obviously, Aidan Nugent struck back with a great goal for Armagh, but... I don't know. I just every now, every now and again, you go right. This the kick they're gonna need. They're gonna drive on from here, and it just just couldn't happen from a dream start. You know, every team sets out to hit the net early. You know, I think everybody works with um, sort of those set plays from the throw in. I know it didn't come directly from throw in, but every, everyone sets out early to, to try and get a major on the board as soon as possible. And McKernan done really, really well till you know till get through, dance through. It was a decent save by the keeper and just Rory Brennan done well to get it through across the McKenna. It was a great finish, but mm. um, I think, as you said, we were, we were more hoping, just rather waiting on it to come, you know, right, we're, we have entered the building here as such, we're ready to go, this is what we've expected, but uh, as we said off air, I think I think we were, we played 12 games this year, we won four, um, and we've been forcing the issue the whole time. We've been trying to get McShane into form, hasn't happened. We had Matty Donnelly and Peter Hart on the pitch yesterday, Peter Hart had a, an appendix operation a few weeks ago. Not on himself. We can see that. Matty Donnelly was turned over for the first ball. Those things just don't happen when, when those lads are at the peak of their powers. And to me, looking in from the outside, I have very little knowledge, you know, but it did seem as if we were trying to force form. And when you're trying to force form, you're nearly better gone. Yeah. And uh, Stephen Campbell for our Matt. Like he put in an inspired performance. He was brilliant, and I was actually asking you earlier how fast he is because he was just pulling away from lads. I couldn't understand how they didn't have Myler on him because Myler did such a good job last year on uh, Paddy Clifford, who plays a similar game, coming link and play, and comes deep, runs with the ball. I just couldn't understand. It seemed he seemed to have the freedom in the park all the time, and like he's an intelligent footballer, has all the skills in the world, and Tyrone made it easy for him. Yeah, like. 
<clears throat> possibly the, the size could have been the, the only thing possibly that would have affected Myler. He's, he's a tall boy too, like, you know. Yeah, but out the field would just... Yeah, well, you see, then for kickouts, you know, yeah. that could be your out for kickouts now. But look, at, if it was me, I'd be back in Myler to be able to do a job. You know, he's, yeah. a, he's a stickler, he's annoying, you know. like so. Put him going the other way as well, I thought. Exactly, but. yeah, but it, it just didn't work out. And some of their matchups, as I said earlier on, like they brought McKiernan out to half back and, and Nugent ran right, got Armagh back in the game, put McKiernan back in on him, who, and, and like thrown of the best full back line in the country. And they took McKiernan out of it and they struggled, put him back in. Nugent was took off. Mm. Do you know, like and that was huge. He kicked one, two, or one, three from play in the first half, and then he was whipped in the second. So it just shows the job he could do, you know. And uh, I think they were experimenting at times, Tyrone by management to see what they could do. And it was a bad day to be experimenting. I think against Armagh, who were who were hungry and probably hurt because they played so poorly against Donegal. So they were going to come out and and try and prove a point. So. It was just a very frustrating day for a Tyrone fan, I think. Yeah, and like you said, they're experimenting. It just kind of ties into what, Kyle, you've been saying about experimenting and hoping, hoping that they'll mm-hmm. find form and hoping that it'll, something will kick on. And something else that went well for Armagh was uh, in goal, um, Ethan Rafferty. I know there's a lot of talk about outfield players playing in goal or goalies that you think they should be outfield, but he actually is. He was an inter-county outfield player, but... Jeez, he kicked a couple of um, he kicked two great points, and he was always like he's a playmaker coming out the field. It's it's kind of hard to know what to do with him at that stage. Do you actually get someone to mark him and leave a corner back free or what? Because he did damage all day yesterday against you, Kyle. Yeah, he did. He caused an awful lot of havoc. Um, two points that any forward would have been yeah absolutely loving with you know like if I had kicked those two scores, you'd have been over the moon. You know when you come off from the winning side, you'd have been you'd you'd have been delighted with yourself, but. He scored two twenty eight in the championship as a player, um, and uh, it's just I think Tyrone might have had you know obviously the in the warm up uh, you know listen to the game Eamon Fitzmaurice did say that a lot of his warm up routine was away from the usual goalkeeping duties in terms of kickouts and um, stopping the ball from underneath or high balls in, but he he was doing lo- long runs out the pitch, giving one twos and playing playing passes inside. Um, both scores was was exceptional. Um, Tyrone probably would have been better, you know, possibly leaving a corner back if they could. I know James Morgan did cause damage going up the pitch. He's a powerful runner, mm. so it would have been it would have been hard to to designate someone um, to 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 leave. But Ethan Rafferty was exceptional. One bit of a, a mistake in the second half. Um, I'm not sure what it is about the goalkeepers, even though that they are outfield players, the likes of Niall Morgan, but. Sometimes they do get a wee bit jittery on the ball and yeah. they cause themselves a wee bit. Oh, I'm not sure why that is, even though that there's two really comfortable players on the ball. I suppose when you know that the goal is free, maybe 60, 70 yards behind you, you a long sprint back. But um, no, I remember that. And in fairness to Armand, they got the bodies back. But um, it was another case there, Tyrone trying to put the ball across. I just, I don't know, they were just taking the wrong options. And just something I'm not used to seeing with Tyrone was a lack of fight and I suppose Armagh were so wired going into this game they just looked like they were going to go through walls and we talked about the pressure Kieran McGinney was going to be under it's his 8th year if they'd lost yesterday would it be time for him to go and Kieran Donny did a good few of the interviews after and like I know first hand from talking to Kieran how much time he has for him but like he has them Armagh, Armagh boys like absolutely buzzing for him and like they were wired yesterday yeah, like Armad, there's no question in their ability. It's their ability to back up a performance after a performance. Mm. You know, like we spoke about Armad, Donegal, like if whoever lost that game would have had the most disappointing year. Do you know, like if Armad had to come out and played the same way against Tyrone, like that would have been a terrible year after yeah. a great league. But like now, th- now the thing is they have to go back now and, and back up that performance against Donegal and show that they're not just a one-trick pony, that they can back it up we all know how good they are. Like yeah. the far, like Connor Turbot sitting on the bench, he would start in any other county team in Ulster and probably the country. Mm. Do you know? So they have loads of ability. They seem to set up very, very well in defence. Maybe it's half Tyrone weren't penetrating enough, but they, they were brilliantly defensively. And we, we questioned their defensive ability before. They were awesome yesterday. So maybe they've spent time, worked on what they needed to work on, and now they're starting to come to be a real good unit. Yeah, and Kyle, I suppose looking at Armad if Donegal again next if you're in the Armad camp how are you approaching that because they were so poor against them a couple of weeks ago yesterday 
they were they were brilliant. They seemed to be playing to their strengths. Um, and from a neutral point of view, we're kind of half hoping that they'll just keep playing that style of football because they have so many fo- brilliant footballers. Grugan, I, I love watching Grugan, to be honest. Mm. I just think he's so natural on the ball. He just, he looks so calm on the ball. Mm. He's really stylish. And like they have, they have that bit of pace, power. And then you have the more intricate players all over the place as well. Yeah, well, it's it's good from an, an Armagh point of view and obviously a Donegal point of view that they have experienced that game um, so recent. Um, they, they played each other just a, a number of weeks ago. I actually don't think Armagh can be that bad again. I know they weren't that they were they were generally poor. They were, they were wasteful of their chances. Like yesterday, they had they had twenty four shots and they scored seventeen, which is a seventy percent ratio. Uh, fr- from play, then they had they had nineteen shots in play and scored fourteen, which is seventy three percent. So that's where they, they they lacked the last day. They against Donegal, um, they had chances, they just couldn't convert. And I think if they play to them strengths, I know I think uh, I seen just before we come on air, the game's fixed for for Clonas, mm. which you know will add to the atmosphere. We, we'll have a huge crowd there again, so that that will add till till the game as well. But if they can get their scoring rate somewhere to where that is. They'll have a huge chance because Donegal. It was a Donegal. Um, the Ulster final with them and Derry, and Donegal are not firing all cylinders. I know Kane would probably back me up here. Cavan were well in the game until two silly mistakes and cost them there. So I do think. I know I tipped Armagh the first day against Donegal, but I, I do think that they have a big chance the next day out. Yeah, I think so too. And just going back to Tyrone, look, they they're the All Ireland champions. Unexpectedly out this early. Um, there was a lot of talk before the game about discipline. And look, they got a black card in the game yesterday. It was it was very harsh. It was never a black card, but um, I always think discipline is more than just getting yellow cards and black cards and red cards. A lot of it is your ability to do your job and be focused and not make mistakes. And I do think the maybe an unexpected All Ireland last year and maybe the extra bit of media attention maybe took that hunger and took the eye off the ball of the Tyrone lads and. They won a grade on the 20s. They obviously had the kickback of the new management as well last year. I'm just wondering, where did Tyrone go next year? Will you be bringing a lot of, will they bring in a lot of under 20s or which way do they go about it? Yeah, but you see in Tyrone, the, the expectation levels is so high because over the last 20 years, they have been there, thereabouts. Mm. If they're not competing for Sam, they're winning Ulster titles or competing with Donegal. So like a, a transitional period will be hard for them to do, you know, to blood a few under 20s. And and not be competing for an Ulster title for two or three years will that be accepted in Tyrone? I don't know. I don't think so. Do you know, so it, it's a sticky situation for them. You know, like if if they lose one or two more players out of that squad, then you're putting a lot of pressure on the young Calvin Calvin lad to come in, um, McLean's young lad as well. Like mm. there's huge pressure on them to perform, and then like when you come into a squad as a young boy, like you're you're thinking to yourself, I'll be a bit part player here at the start. And then you start to get motoring. Them boys could be, I might have to be thrown in straight away. And and that could be huge pressure. And, and it just mightn't work out. So it, it's a tricky one now for, for Doher and the lads. You know, it it definitely, um, it wouldn't be a camp, a management camp that I would be looking forward to be in because you could be waiting on a text to say, I'm going travelling. I've yeah. won in All-Ireland. I've won two or three Ulsters. It's time to go travelling. Two or three of the big names do that. We say Maddie Donnelly, He's getting on in years too. Like if he says enough's enough, you know, like he's a huge man, I'm sure, in the dressing room as well. Like so, it's just uh, I, I'd be turning my phone off for a few months, make sure I got no texts. <laughs> what do you reckon, Kyle? You know a lot of the players now, and you like playing with him and playing against him, and even the under twenties lads. There are some super footballers. Maybe some of them mightn't be quite ready for it. And Keen mentioned a few lads like. You need the stalwarts to stay on. And I know, like Matty Donnelly, I'd say the body's been put through the ringer as well the last number of years, and he he's an unbelievable soldier. And you need them personalities to be there with these younger lads coming through because there is a lot of talent there. That, that's the same as, you know, as every dressing room mm. and every team that's probably successful. You have the, the older heads um, that's been around the block a number of times that sort of can pave the, the pathway for the younger lads but like just going back to Dara Canavan or uh, Rory Canavan yesterday I think uh, it was disappointing from a Tyrone by, point of view sitting watching the game yesterday we were five points down at one stage 15 minutes to go I'm thinking you know this is a spark we need we need something here can you you know 
what, what's the reason for putting him on the bench? Get him in there, you know, get him winning a few free kicks, get a, get the scoreboard taken over. We only had two forwards on the score sheet yesterday. McKenna's first goal and McCurry had uh, seven points. So, you know, that that's that, that was a disappointing thing for me. We brought on um, Matthew McLean, who, look, maybe we're trying to get a, a high ball in around the edge of the square, but but 15 minutes ago, it was a time for Ray Canavan just to to liven the show up a bit, get the crowd going again because you know he would have done that. Um, but in terms of the few of the older hands, you know I've played with Matty Donnelly for 10 years and Ronan McNamee and Peter Hart. Um, so Matty's body's been through quite a lot now over the last number of years. The hamstring coming off the bone, mm. the other hamstring giving him bother, knee injuries. He, he's been around the block so. Look, I would not be surprised if we see, you know, one or two boys take an extended break and then see how that goes. But you definitely need a few older heads uh, around the dressing room to, to show the younger lads just that it's a different step up from even minor or under 20 level. Yeah, and like like Kyle was saying, they're keen, like with, especially with the two Canavan brothers, I just think they're so different to the forwards that they had on the pitch. They're not as big and robust, but they're just so intricate, so intelligent. They play with their brain like they're a couple of steps ahead of most players it was a day for something like it was there was a time for something different because it wasn't working and Kyle highlighted there the lack of scoring power that was there and even winning freeze just just to change up it just on the sideline I, t- I think they got a lot wrong yeah no I definitely agree like I do agree not to start the two kind of mm. boys because I thought that, and it was the start of the game was hell for leather there was a lot of huge hits it wouldn't suit the two boys and I thought when the game opened up a wee bit more like it did in the second half and, and a lot of handier frees were given. Them smaller yeah. boys, as we'd know, yeah. you, you do get them handier frees at times like the likes of Aidan O'Shea and these boys don't get them. Yeah. Do you know? So the like uh, the Canavans coming on could have got two or three handy frees. Like, and then a four-point game went to a two-point game. Instead it was going, every time it got to four points it was going back to five to six. Do you know? So they were trying big men against big men instead of maybe trying something a wee bit different and, and the two Canavan boys, I, I was sure they'd come in a wee bit earlier. Um and and Rory would have been would have been great for him to like. There's not too many Ulster Championship games that would have that atmosphere, and he would have that in the bank then straight away, yeah. and that would have set him up for next year. Do you know? So it it was just a strange one. Maybe maybe he was brought in just to see have him around the camp and stuff like that. But if they were willing to do that, why why bring on the the McLean if, lad as well? If you you're know? willing to put him on, if you're willing to put him on the panel, you have to go and be be ruthless enough to put him in there because I think if you're an RMA player and you see him coming in 15 minutes to go you, you don't know what to expect this lad has never played before and all of a sudden he kicks a point off you the crowd's on right behind your own again it's a totally different game and I do think if you're putting him on the panel he's got to go in Yeah no I, I would play him but my thought process when he didn't come in where they're bringing him in to bring him around the squad yeah. but if they were doing that why bring in McLean and two boys came from the same squad you know and they had tried the big men, you know, yeah. then McKenna, Colin yeah, McShane were all there and they put in another big man. It wasn't working. Didn't work all day. So, yeah, I, but it's, it, my thing there is like when you're brought in, you're not to make up the numbers. I can, I made my debut against Tyrone and I was same size, all right, <laughs> still small, but uh, I would have been weaker. <clears throat> but it was a case of I had legs, which he has in abundance. Like you said, the game is stretched at that point. Even though a few Tyrone knew me from the minors the year before, the senior players wouldn't have known me that well. And it was a case of just go youthful exuberance that and when the game is stretched like that, it just opens up. The crowd would have got a buzz off it. And Tyrone needed sparks. And do you know what? Things weren't going right very early. I just I thought they missed a the trick there, not bringing him in early and just saying, Hi, you've nothing to lose here. There's no pressure on you. You go and you just run, do your thing. I think you would. I think you would have set a, a spark for him. Yeah, like I, I done the same. I was, I was brought in as, as a cub hmm. out of minor, and I thought, oh, you've just been brought in to to be brought around the yeah. place. And and I remember Paddy McNamee was a selector, and he was bringing me to the game. And he says, oh, you'll see time. I was shitting it. I, I was up in the car. I said, see time. I said, what are you talking about? And and did come on and loved it. Like you know, yeah. as that like. You're buzzing around the place. You get on the ball and you get a little bit of confidence. Like we were playing Mead and Clonus. So it was a huge game. Like you know, Darren Fay was full back. Like imagine, yeah. like I was smaller than you, looking up at him. Like it was, but it, it was huge for me to get get on that day. And 
like it was like <clears throat> I definitely brought I felt I brought a spark to the game yeah so and as you said you brought a spark to the game like Rory Kavanagh is probably better than yeah. <laughs> better than me and maybe better than you you know by the looks of things he's he's outrageous and his so, conference like, is sky high he's an All-Ireland medal in the back pocket already he's the talk of the country yeah Do you know he wasn't going to be lacking confidence but look it's, look they missed the trick um, but I suppose you can't take away from our man what they did on the day and I just hope I'm glad Eamon's not here because I can say it uh, I just hope that they go with the same attitude the same game plan because they had it all yesterday there was, some of the scores were just um, I think it was Nugent's um, score actually in the first half where the kick out from Rafferty crossed the field to Stephen Campbell he had a diagonal ball I think it was three kicks of the ball and over the bar and it was just unbelievable football but it's a case of right you're playing another team from Ulster don't try this mirroring crack of oh we'll go defensive and you'll go defensive and we'll be back and forth because Armagh have the players all over the pitch to cause Donegal problems because Donegal aren't hitting the heights that some of us are expecting them the, to hit the thing Donegal have that Tyrone didn't have yesterday was huge men around the middle mm. like I said to you before the show like Frank Burns great player but he's small in the middle of the field you look at the Armagh won a lot of their own long kickouts. Yeah. So next of all, bang early ball against Donegal in the first game. They didn't win all them long kickouts. Donegal won them. Yeah. So they were having to defend for the whole game and break out of pace. That that sucks the life really? out of you. Do you know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see what way they go as regards will they try a short kick out and get Rafferty on the ball and get an overlap, or will they proceed and and try and win that aerial duel around the middle? It, it's a very interesting game. Like, but. If they can get early ball into the forwards as as Cavan did against Donegal, then oh, yeah. then Donegal are under severe pressure. Yeah, and I suppose not too far away, Mikhail Park. <clears throat> the sun was shining down there, and the sun was definitely shining on Mayo because they I think they got out of jail. A um, couple of refereeing decisions there that Benty was off the head about, and I I couldn't believe they weren't given. Being honest, and um, Kieran Whelan was on the Sunday game last night. He was on about duty of care and he he got the rules arse ways anyway a leg block's a leg block no matter he, he didn't worry about duty of care when he was playing himself <laughs> <laughs> same fella but um, Mayo get through <clears throat> um, but there's not going to be much excitement I don't think about Mayo at the moment look they are one of them teams they're a slow burner Kyle they, they tend to improve but it, it seems to be the same issues with Mayo um, scoring um, 113 yeah. not great kicking yeah, it's, it's, it's just it seems to be the nearly the same as as Tyrone with them. We one forward who gets the the majority of their one their scores, and then it's what they they pipe up with after that in terms of who who gets a few scores. But um, the, the big calls definitely for me uh, the the call at the end was a stone wall penalty. Um, in my opinion, the happens anywhere else on the pitch, that's a free kick. I'm not sure why Barry Casty felt the need to, to not to give it because it was it was a penalty in my opinion. And I know a few people have said maybe if, if it was different. Uh, I heard um, Peter Kenneman saying if it had been someone different, they, they might have bought it just a bit right. But it doesn't matter. It was a penalty. Like um, and the the foot block. I think that rule is is a real grey area. Um, in terms of knowing what the rule is, but I think maybe common sense was in the second decision where it was a, a distance away where it couldn't cause the, the player any harm where the first one was a lot closer. It was the width of the ball away. So it's, it's disappointing. And, and you know, you, you, you know yourself, Bante doesn't hold back. I know he doesn't criticize too many referees over his time, but he definitely came out in full force after the game and you can't blame him in the heat of the battle. And things probably not playing as well as he should have played, but that, that for me, I'm not sure what you boys think, but that was a penalty. I, I thought they were both stonewalls, to be honest. Like, like the, forgetting about the leg block for a second, it, he wrapped his arms around him. Take the trip out of it, he, he wrapped his arms around him. So what's he supposed to do? Yeah, I, I kind of, I'd half agree with, with Canavan. Like, you need to buy a free like that a wee, wee bit better. But, that just uh, shows how bad referees are that you have to buy it <laughs> yeah, when well, a fella wraps his arms around But then again, they're, they're bought and they're never frees out the field, you yeah. know, so it can happen too. But, like, even the Mayo one, like, I think it was it was a, a Ryan Wiley. Like, how are you meant to get your, your hands down to block a ball without... 
planting your foot for it. He didn't lead with his foot. His foot was there and he was putting his hands down. His foot was, was his foot planted? He was planting his foot yeah. to get his hands down. I can't understand. Like, I I was trying to think about it yesterday evening. I was like, how are you meant to get down? Like, dive down head first. Like, but you're actually making your body as big as possible yeah. by actually spreading your leg across. Like, yeah. I actually thought that was harsh. And then I thought the, the one Monaghan didn't get was a way more obvious. Like, he stretched out his leg. Yeah. It's just... It's one of them rules that kind of it's a referee's discretion early, which is which is a bad thing because next week, yeah, a team mightn't get it, and you'd be like, "How is that?" So, look, it's one of them things. There was two goal, two penalty opportunities. You think he had the chance, right? I didn't give that. Yeah, I'll give this one, and Mayo people will be saying, "But that's not the way to do it." But it, it's just a, a tricky one. It it probably was. Keegan was cute enough to take his hands out really yeah. quick, but as you say, the wrapped around. Tripped him up, but the referee was referee was forty meters away. Like he was, I don't know where he thought the play was going because Monaghan had the high press on. He should have been stuck in the middle of it, so he was forty meters away. He wasn't going to be able to make a good enough call on it. But like, if well, the penalty if was there, given, he's, he's got to go and consult then. Well, well that, that's the thing. That's like true, you, yeah. you have two umpires. <clears throat> um, we go on to the Telton Cup later, who had no problem disallowing a goal mm. in one game, and you have two calls right in front of them. No more than 10 yards. Two of them. And for me, I think they're they're both penalties. Yeah. I, I think if, if in doubt, and, you know, uh, that's why that's why those officials are with you. Mm. You know, you have, I know Sean Hurston, I know Sean Hurston personally, and he takes referees from our own club, one of my own cl- local club, and, and a few other clubs around um, for his umpires. And th- th- they obviously be, he was mic'd up from one from each end. So you've got to go consult. You've got to go and try and determine the, the decision. I know Barry Cassidy was a distance away, but you've got to trust that that's why you have those men with you. Go and, and consult with them and make the right call. I know it's not easy. You're blowing it up. What are you stopping it for? But <laughs> in these big games, it's, it's important that we get these decisions as right as we can. Yeah, look, it's cost Monaghan, and I can understand why Benty was so... Um cross after the game but going back to the actual match um, Monaghan set up really defensive and for me like it's a prime thing to do against Mayo because they don't kick enough ball they run so much and they were they were getting joy off at Monaghan they were, Mayo were finding it difficult and then black card for Conor McManus bit harsh uh, but he stuck out the leg it was yeah. silly it was a forwards tackle yeah, it was, but that seemed to be the turning point that, that, that was a huge one <laughs> you, you, never ta- you, you never tackled. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, but like, look at McManus, when you think about it, like, if I was, you, he knew what he was at, Ken, he yeah. was hoping, and, and then he was caught on it. Look at, he knows himself, he's got away with probably more, Yeah. same as any forward, got away with more than he's been caught for, as in buy and freeze. <clears throat> now, if, if I was playing, I would have been furious to get a black card for it. But as the letter of the law goes, as they say, it's yeah. a frustrating one. Like, and it, it was a huge moment. Like, you lose someone like Conor McManus for for ten minutes. If he's not scoring two points, he's involved. He's taking Oshie yeah. Mullen out of the play. There's another lad that can't pick up. You know, some of the other forwards. You know, so it it, it was a huge ten minutes. Like, yeah, Kyle, it was one of them ones where you you hang out. You're getting no value for it anyway. Put it yeah. that way. And he kind of, it was a lazy way, leg. Yeah, I mind mean, I mean, I mean seeing the, just the shape of his body. He was hoping. I think he th- was hoping that the, bo- the the I'm not sure was it was it Aiden O'Shea. I can't remember. Aiden, yeah. it was. But the way I think he was hoping that Aiden O'Shea maybe was a bit closer to him. He actually Aiden probably stepped out a wee bit further, which enabled that it actually came by his foot rather than maybe st- trying to stop him with his inner side of his leg. But he knew what he was doing. And look, it's where where. In, in the game at the minute, once like even the Richie Donnelly one, to me wasn't a black card. That one in the letter of the law at the minute is a black card, and it's, it's frustrating because Monaghan or Mayo, you know, kicked on in that period of time. They, they got a, a good few scores at that stage, and that's that's the disappointing part, you know. Yeah, they got one three um, in that period of time, so we went from being two points down to one three to two up. Like it's a big turnaround there, and I suppose that's how you do make the most of the numerical advantage, but. I've said it and all the guests have said it here before the thing that comes back to hurt Mayo every every year seems to be the lack of scoring power and they got scores yesterday from Paddy Durkin Omar McLaughlin Lee Keegan 
Matty Ruan. That's four points out of one thirteen. You're just not go- you're not gonna beat a Dublin or a Kerry or whoever's one of the top teams at the time when you're not scoring. I know they've they've had injuries and stuff, but it's their style of play that cracks me up. The, their style of play is is unsustainable. It's a hundred mile an hour every time they get the ball. It's run, 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 and then they go into these lulls, and mm-hmm. these lulls are are ridiculously long. Like. The Kerrys, the Dublins, like the Tyrones, you know, Tyrone had a lull yesterday and that's why they're gone, but they would always chip away at one or two points when they're not on the ball enough. But like Mayo, every time they get it, it they nearly feed off the crowd and it's 100 mile an hour. Yeah. Everyone has to run 100 mile an hour. Like the Dublin good teams used to just slow the whole thing right down and, and chip away at a point. Like when Mayo had to go up against the blanket defence they didn't really know what to do. Unless the runners were penetrating and getting through, they didn't really know what to do. They had no one to come on the loop and kick a score. So it's hard work there the, as well. The same type of player from probably number two to number 12. Like yeah. The exact same type of player. Like They've no, we'll say, number 11 who can open up the play. Do you know? And I'd say Killian O'Connor's in there going, oh, give me a ball playing number 11. You know, yeah. who can dink a pass in like... Do you know, the like a McCarran there would be ideal at number yeah. 11 for Mayo. Little dinky passes in, sure, Killian Connor will feel it. Do you know, like, their their game works against early doors in in, 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 in Connacht. But then when they get to Crow Park, right, big field, open the legs, and they win these games. But then when they're playing the Dublins and the Kerrys, they can't win these games because they're cuter and they have the engines the same as them. So I, I just think there needs to be a slight overhaul or a change of tact of the type of player they introduce like they need they need one or two more football heads as regards the the engine room that they have yeah and I don't think we're going to get that change of tactic I think everyone's been on about this for a good couple of years (laughs) no it seems to be the same thing with Mayo but look they got over the line um, and they had a great start to the second half Kyle but they went 20 minutes then without scoring and my thing there is like what Keane said there Dublin will get that scoreboard going they'd be better than Kerry at it to be fair um, they ju- they're just lacking something different um, yeah. it's the same thing over and over again I do think like Monaghan just setting up that defensive structure and I think if any like Kildare now will be thinking we conceded goals very quickly against Dublin we don't want to do that against Mayo we know Mayo don't like when they have the, the bodies back Kildare could go and try and do something similar look for a turnover and catch him on the break the next day because like, I'd have worries about Mayo going forward even though look they did well the last day to get over the line but they're not convincing me whenever you're looking at opposition um, teams and you, you look at the teams that, that's challenging I know that, the, that Mayo have been there uh, for a few years they, they pushed Dublin all the way and their style of play the way Dublin was committing forward to certain times suited them the running game but you look at the scores it was 1-6 Killian was Killian O'Connor scored, you know, and the next was Lee Keegan with one point. You know, when everybody else chipped in, there was four or five other players chipped in with one point. So your initial, you know, if you were setting up to to, to counteract that, if you can put out a fire and Killian O'Connor and put him out, you know, to take him down. He scored one penalty, one from play, five frees. You go a long way of stopping Mayo. You mm-hmm. know, that's that's the long and short of it. You go. A, I know that they have other players that, that can cause damage, but. You, you go out against Kerry, you have David Clifford to think of, you have Paul Ginny to think of, you have Killian Sablan to come on, Potty Clifford, Stephen O'Brien, you go to Dublin, you have Conal Callahan. You, you have so many fires to put out that if someone doesn't step up, someone else is going to do it. Um, and you don't see that with Mayo at the minute. That seems to be that they're very reliant on one player for a lot of scores. And it was the same with Tyrone yesterday. Um, I, I said that earlier. So Kildare will be setting up to frustrate them and hit them on the counter attack. It's that will be you know whenever they get the bodies forward from the running game, Killian or, or um, Ushi Mullen gets forward, Lee Keegan gets forward, Aidan O'Shea's in the middle of the play. Um, Owen McLaughlin is that is lightning quick. Um, I was impressed with him actually at the weekend. He was getting himself in some really good positions, but should have got a goal as well. It, yeah, should have had a goal. Um, it was probably he, he had a. A lot of the net at the left hand side of the keeper to, to aim for, he sort of went for a bit more power and begging done well to stand up mm-hmm. for so long. But um, you'd be, I would think, looking back, Kildare will take a lot of belief from 
an underperforming an underperforming Monaghan. Yeah, I think so as well. And just on Killian O'Connor's penalty, like I can just imagine the size of Vegan in the goal, but Killian O'Connor is as cool as you like in that position. It was unbelievable to yeah. some penalty. Outrageous penalty, right? In the, and look, it probably couldn't put it anywhere else. No. Uh, Began was was actually fairly close to it because he guessed the right side. But look, at Killian O'Connor's always going to get to scores if he's not scoring from play. He's fairly concrete from freeze. But the the thing about it is, we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, Kildare are now trying to reenact what Monaghan did. They're not used to it. Yeah. Do you know, so Monaghan have played this style <clears throat> at times for, for the last 10 years. So they can do it. And then you you bring the Crow Park factor in. Mayo to Crow Park with the running power. That's when they come to their milk because yeah. there's so much space. Whereas in Castlebar, big pitch, yes, but... It, it's it's enclosed a lot more than Crow Park, so it, it's a lot more difficult. Like Mayo now will will pro- with, they will definitely improve when they come to Crow Park, and they will have a lot more opportunities because Kerry kick, Dublin kick, so they've man on man defenders who can deal with lads. Yeah. We said that before, so they've probably got over the stickiest part of their year. Do you know? So yeah. now, like we're we're half nearly writing them off at the minute, but. They are as good as Dublin when they get to Crow Park or as good as the Kerrys from years ago. Crow Park is where they shine their best. And yeah, the f- lack of forwards probably has let them down over the years. But they're still in the mix once they get to Crow Park. They're as as much mix. as I say they need to change up and have one or two extra. Yeah, have an, a couple of more arrows I- I- in the back pocket. But you'd hope Brian O'Donnell will be available now, hopefully next week. Yeah, now he'd, be, he'd be a big addition, yeah. yeah. But like... It's just the Crow Park factor is massive. We always say, oh, Dublin of Crow Park, they're fine. Mayo get to Crow Park, they're a different animal because of their running power. And if they could just not go 100 mile, at a, a 100 mile an hour every time they got yeah. the ball and just calm it down maybe for two or three minutes, they mightn't just run out of steam. And the other thing is, like, they had a long gap. Mayo had a long gap between the Galway game and the Monaghan game. I am hanging my hat on the hope that they have been working on something different that they're holding it, holding it back until they get to Crow Park. And I'm not sure what Dermot O'Connor's story is. Is he gone for much longer or what? But you, you add in Ryan O'Donoghue, Dermot O'Connor, then you have options. And you'd hope then that they might start tweaking their play a bit. But um, I suppose there was a couple of other games on and uh, a team we uh, we gave enough stick to all throughout the year. And Sean Kavanagh gave him an awful doing there one day on the Sunday game. Poor old Sean's getting a doing on this podcast today. <laughs> but <laughs> well, Cork did a big win against Loud. Um, end, of the, end of the road for Loud this year, but they've had a good year. And it was the, it was the qualifier I think Cork needed at home. Um, and just the extra bit of quality they had up front. Brian Hurley and Sherlock got him over the line. Um, Kyle. Yeah, uh, I think we, we we did speak about this the last day. Um on the podcast, we talked about, um, you know, Louth coming up the, the divisions. I do think that uh, Mickey and Gavin going in there and putting the structure, getting the, the S&C sort of helped them massively. And obviously they, they have a, a number of good players among their ranks. But whenever they get that right, get them all singing off the same hymn sheet, I think you can do work to get out of Division 4 and Division 3 as such. But... It goes to show just that the levels, when you go up, the, the you know to the next level in terms of Division Two teams, and even going up against Kildare, uh, the last day out for or the second last day out for for Louth was was difficult for them. There's a massive gap, so now will be the see what good work can be done. Can they progress? Can they bring a few more through and close that gap to the rest of the teams in 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 the in Leinster, but. Like Cork just done enough to get over the line. Uh, it's, it's the game they needed, and obviously the draw has been kind to them again. Yeah. Um. This weekend or or the following weekend, or next week or this weekend, I think. This it is, weekend, um, yeah. The, the, the draw has been kind to them again, so I I would fancy them to come through a tight game as well, Cork. But that that's a game that's very similar to Harman and Donegal could go either way. Yeah, and obviously down as well down in Munster, Clare had a big win against well a good win against uh, Mead, which Colum Collins down there. Like I have so much time for him, and like I always say, the Clare don't get the credit they deserve. Um, big win against Mead because I think a lot of people are thinking that Mead might just edge it. Yeah, o- over the last few years, Mead have have got the better of them mm. in, in tight, sticky games. But from looking at parts of it, 
and and Mead would say that a, the goalkeeping position was their their, their issue over the last few years. Not without anymore. without their keeper, they, they lost the game. It's two more goals, two fantastic yeah. saves. So, look at Mead. I don't know what you can say about Mead at the minute. Like, was it two years ago they came back and tightened Dublin? Or, yeah. You know, like and and then you were thinking, yeah, Mead is back. This Dublin Mead rivalry could be on its way back, and they've gone. They could be fifth or sixth in the pecking order in Leinster. Like, and when was the last time you could say that about Mead? So, mm. it'll be interesting to see what way management and, and county board look at, at at the next couple of years because the, there has to be talent there. The, the, they're winning minor All Irelands and stuff like that over the last few years and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, and like it's, Cl- Clare, it's interesting. Clare are a prime example too. They have Cleary and Tuberty up front, like who are as good as any two forwards out there. Beautiful footballers, and if you have a couple of two or three good forwards you'll always have a chance like in fairness Clare they did a very good win the last day so tough game now against Roscommon yeah look at it's it, getting over that line and getting them to the next level was huge for them like the celebrations after the match was yeah this was huge for yeah. us you know Roscommon look at Roscommon will be licking their lips too they're wounded at the minute but Roscommon you'd be thinking would be very very happy with the draw but you cannot you can never write off Clare. They're always there, thereabouts. They were in the mix to to go up in Division Two until late on in the league. So it'll be a, it'll be a tricky enough one for us, yeah. Common. But they will be happier to have them than we'd say the Armas or Donegal's. You know, hundred percent. And the Talitian Cup, I suppose, that probably where the best action was the weekend. And uh, for Mana and Kevin, I'm going to ignore you for a second, Keen, because you won't be able to shut up about this one. <laughs> But uh, I know you're happy about it. But to some performance by Kevin and to some start to the game, Kyle, the goal yeah. by Thomas Galligan. Right, right from the throw in. Um, so the, uh, we did speak about this earlier. The, mm. the, that's what every team wants to set out and get that score set, set themselves up. I know that in, in Tyrone, for a number of years, we worked on set plays from a throw in, and uh, that's one that worked a three. Uh, Thomas Galligan, the big, can know a lot more about him than, than me. I've seen him just. Last few years, you know, we, a couple of years ago, we got an all star. So, he, big, big, powerful man. I seen him that day down in, in Corrigan Park against Antrim. He's a big unit, and when he gets going, he is hard to stop. Like, that's it was the dream start, and it was always going to be hard for Fermanagh to, to come out and claw that back. They did close the gap, but I think just Gavin always had, had too much in the tank for them. There was never, I think, I think the, re, the result was was never in doubt. No, Keen, to some some performance by him. Yeah, look at it. it Going into the game, it was a sticky one. Like for man, a local derby kind of closes the gap of, of quality. You know, when you're going in and you're playing, you're like, this is going to be tit for tat. But when you when you get someone like Thomas catching a ball, and uh, we said about Soapy Campbell having pace, Thomas Galligan, when he gets going, is frightening. Like he is oh. power and pace. Like he is as quick. He'd probably do 100 metres, I'd say, 12 seconds. Like he is frightening quick when he gets going. That size, it'd and that be power. hard to stop him. So there's small lads who should be quick trailing after him and, and back of the net, you know, like and he he probably was riddled with injuries for the first couple of years of his inter county career. Now we'd say Andre there and Calvin has got him right. He's in great shape, big strong man. He's been huge for us. But look at it was a game it was kind of one of them banana skin games that were expected to win and sometimes they're the games that Traditionally, Cavan haven't performed in so that goal at the start, and he was one three to no score. Set it's us eight up eight minutes, yeah. yeah. Set us up lovely just to kick on. But <clears throat> I think that the key for us is is defensively we're, we're we're fairly sound. You know, we're not leaking goals and stuff like that. So I think that's that's a huge key for us going forward. Yeah, for man, I never really got going. Um, most of the scores were from freeze. Um, so it was one of them ones that Cavan be delighted to get over the line. Kept it down to thirteen points, which is always good, which should build confidence as well. And they'll drive on and like that. It's always harder going into games, Kyle, as well, when you're the favourites and everyone's ex- saying that you're playing a level below yourself, so you should be winning these games. So, Kevin, in fairness, they're they're hitting the ground running in games and taking the pressure off. Them, I suppose a small bit. I, I was I I was impressed with Kevin against Donegal. I thought they, they they played really well in the Ulster Championship, and I do think it came down to you know a couple of moments of just the game fell away from them. the the scoreline flattered Donegal that day. Um, I was chatting a few Donegal men after the match, and they were they were happy to get out of Clonus that day with the win. Uh, um, the way things went, but like Paddy Lynch up front against Antrim shot the lights out was, was a great great find. Grove McKernan's a, a fantastic player, and you have Thomas Galligan who are three huge men. Um, 
and if they're on song, it definitely gives Kevin a, a big chance any day out, and the the they'll be impressed with, with with how they started the game. But as I say, it does it does um bode well whenever they 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 can come through those potential banana skins. I know that again, said it's a local derby as such uh, in terms of you know there's not a million miles between the two teams, but. Calvin will just be happy to be in the next round. I know they, they probably not want to be in the, the Italian Cup, but you know it, it sets them for a good stead for next year. Yeah, look, it's another outing in Crow Park and one step away from another final. But I suppose the game of the weekend was down in Connacht, Leitrim and Sligo, 216 to 119 after extra time and then into penalties. Like we've been saying it for a while here. That's that's why the Italian Cup was here for these teams of like it was a super game and some of the scores that were kicked were outrageous. Oh, like Leitrim, Leitrim kicked some outrageous scores. Same as Sligo, but uh, Keith Byrne at, at number eleven. Like, what a find! Like, what? Like, it's a sco- I, I all would, the scores I were unbelievable. Have, I wouldn't have even known that chap until yesterday, and that's criminal because he's he's quality. You know, like he kicking balls over his shoulder, wrong side, solo dummies, Everton. Like, I think it was was it six or seven points he finished up with, and and most from play. You know. Yeah. Like what a player! And stuck a penalty. And stuck a penalty. You know, like it, it's it's. They spoke about it, giving people a chance to see the other quality players out there. And look, at there was loads of quality players in the Sligo team as well. But it just stood out for me how good he was. You know, and it, everyone used to talk Emlyn Mulligan for for Leitrim, and you never knew anyone else. Like, yeah. It, like he's he's now the new new kid on the block. We'll say for Leitrim, and if they could b- build a team around the like of him for the next couple of years. Who knows how far they can go? And as as it was said after the game, there's a huge interest in Leeds from now. Like young kids are happy going to a match, so yeah. they can keep progressing. Who knows what they can start to do and, and start to rebuild the game over there? Yeah, and Kyle, I suppose look, it was such a great game. The excitement was unreal. I don't want to be bringing it down the negative, but there is a, there was always one negative. It was the refereeing or umpire's decision that went against Leitrim. Um, in fairness, Andy Moore, I heard him speaking after the game, and he, he said it straight. I don't want to be one of them teams. Or when the managers moaning about stuff, but if it was me, I'd be moaning away mad. But it was an awful call, and it probably cost Leitrim the game because getting a goal in extra time, it's a it's a sucker punch as well, and it is hard to get yourself back up after that. So it was it was poor to see Leitrim going out on a mistake. Yeah, uh, in fairness, uh, I did I heard Andy um, speak after the match, and he, he didn't want to be. You could see him; he, he was sort of scrim scrimmaging the mm. the face he and he was rubbing the back of the head. He didn't want to be that person in terms of, you know, to say that he was bothered by the referee and the decision the call. But to me it was never a square ball. I, I I seen a clip of it then as well. Um just waited perfectly outside the box and and it was a perfectly legitimate goal for me. But it's disappointing in that behalf because as Andy did say why always go with the you know the, the umpire that says it is a square ball, why yeah. not are we you know Agreeing with the umpire, going for the green flag. One, it's disappointing on that behalf. And it's 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 annoying. I'm sure for Leitham going out on, on a decision they had because, as you stated there yourself, um, Darren, that getting a goal in extra time is a massive score. Getting a couple of points in extra time over that course of the time we've seen um, Donegal and Derry last week was one one apiece in the first half. It's very very hard to to get scores in that stage of the, the game. So that that was a big um. A big turning point in that game, but uh, I do agree with with Kane there as well. That you would never. It's great to see some of these lads, you know, get the airtime that they deserve. Alan Riley was six points, and Patrick O'Connor was six points for Sligo as well. You, you don't get to see that too often, you know, we, just with the way the, the the media rates of the GA is. But it's great to see these lads, you know, and for Sligo themselves getting to the Italian Cup, getting to Croke Park because, um. They probably would never have been in Crook Park this year, only for only for the Talchin Cup. Yeah, no, it's brilliant, and like that, Sligo have come got there now after two huge wins. Uh, both going to extra time, and I'm just going to read it out here from the uh, the Sligo Twitter account. Today's game against Leitrim was a superb occasion, probably the best occasion and playing experience our players have had in the last five years, and brilliant entertainment for a crowd who were fully engaged. Like, do you want Says more? All, yeah, yeah, what more do you have to say after that? So it was brilliant, and do you know what's funny? I was um. I was in the car and I was listening to Tommy Walsh kill Kenny Hurler on about, you know, games in Crow Park and this, that and the other and how he got there with his club and it was all about he was so delighted to see players that he'd sold her with for so many years with the club get to Crow Park and these Sligo lads now are going to be getting ready to go to Crow Park and they might have one game, they might have two games in Crow Park and they might even be silver at the end of it. So 
it's brilliant to be honest and like these are the games now that are going to help build this Talton Cup into something that's going to just get bigger and better yeah, all going well they've won game <laughs> and, and one game only but uh, I know like I'll just want to say no it is huge it, it definitely is huge because all the buzz when Terry Hyland went to Leitrim was they got to the league final and they got to Crow Park do you know and yeah. playing at Crow Park is the pinnacle for, for yeah. everyone look at the pinnacle is to play when the place is absolutely packed to the rafters but that's that's all Ireland final day and there's not too many that, that are lucky enough to do that but it's huge. Like there's players there that could be coming to the end of their career after never playing there. Yeah. Do you know? So it it is massive and, and, and it's a great occasion. And look at double header. If you could get all the crowd for both all four teams in at the one time and enjoy the spectacle yeah. of the two games, it, it'd be fantastic. And look at if it's good weather, there, there's a good possibility everyone will go up to get the two games. But it, it, there should you should maybe should have twenty be thirty thousand in there anyway like it'd be it'll be great yeah and awfully, awfully look awfully <clears> had a comfortable <throat> game against new against New York and Paddy Dunnigan the goalie for awfully he took off from his sister's wedding fair play at him <laughs> he missed the mass maybe and back for the afters but uh, he came back played in goal kept a clean sheet it was fairly comfortable look I look New York were always going to be up against it uh, look not having a game and stuff like that so. Look, it was a pity. No, Offaly didn't get a tougher game. They'll have a tougher one now against Westmead, um, who had a good win against Carlo. John Hesselin, another big name, but we're getting to see more of him. He kicked one nine the weekend as well. So, um, like that, two thirteen to one twenty one. It's fair scoring, and like that for all of these players and for these counties, they'd have been sitting, finished, doing nothing now. So there's good excitement coming up now in the next couple of weeks, and uh, I can just imagine the buzz. Being in one of them camps now, getting ready to go to Crow Park, probably pitched it on playing too often as well. So it's going to be exciting times for him. Like you go, like you go to play any of these teams, you're going in. Like we say, maybe the exception of New York, but New York were getting over here for a, a holiday as well, you know. So for them, it's great. But each team going into that, like Carlo were going into that game against Westmead in full belief they were going to win that game, Do you know. And, and we're in the mix for long yeah. periods. Like whereas other other competitions, you're going to play Dublin and you're going to play, we'd say Kildare. It's kind of like, oh yeah, we're in the mix. We're not in the mix, you know. Yeah. And and that's like you, you in the back of your mind, you know, you're not in the mix. So it, it's a huge occasion. And and look at the to me, the two the two best teams in it are Westmead and Cavan, and it's good that the two of them avoid each other. Yeah. But Cavan won't want to play Sligo. Cavan played Sligo in the league. And it was a sticky one down in Markovic Park, you know, like I, I think we ended up winning by, by five or six in the end, but we, we got a lucky enough goal to, to kick us on. So they'll come into the game looking at that that to go, we weren't miles away from Cavan. They might think of us not as good as them. So they'll be coming in under the radar. So it'll, it'll be a real interesting uh, couple of games now. Yeah, and the uh, qualifiers run this morning or the... The draw for the qualifiers around this morning with Armavi, Donegal, Kildare v Mayo, Cork and Limerick, Clare and Roscommon and there's a couple of conspiracy theories going around the place that the Ulster teams are being drawn against them to <coughs> stop one of them from winning Sam. Um, I wouldn't go that far but it's definitely going to, there'll be fireworks at that one anyway Kyle. Yeah, um, or to see a bit more defensive football whatever way you want to put it. Uh, yeah. But, um, no, I, I would be, it's, I suppose the draw is done. We we take it as as what it is, but there's something. This it's set up for some tasty tasty encounters, and with the Donegal and Armagh will will be it'll be fireworks. As I say, it's in Clona's fixed. I think for the for the Sunday. Um, so both teams will know each other really well, and and look, I'm looking forward to seeing Armagh again. Um, see if they can back up yesterday's performance with with how how they performed. Uh, I I love watching teams move the ball via kick kick pass it's just yeah. something that, that I enjoy watching as a side of the game that I love to see players playing with their head up um, more so than, than the running game look so it'll be fireworks at that one because I do, I do think we have an underperforming Donegal who have slipped through to an Ulster final could have been nipped um, by Kevin that day but I'm looking forward to that one I, I fancy I do fancy Armada to come out on top I think that they they dug deep for Kieran McGinney yesterday Seemed to be. Uh, I listened to Kieran Donnie's interview after, and they said they just stripped it back, they, and they they went man for man. They they set up their matchups, and uh, and they went for hell for leather, and it worked for them. And uh, hopefully, just for for Kieran McGinney's sake, knowing some of the RMA players and knowing how much respect they have, I know there was there was outside pressure from from probably the media that that Kieran McGinney, if he didn't win, you know this could be his. But I think if you ask any of those Armagh lads, I think it would be a totally different story. Yeah, and like that Armagh, you'd imagine will have the momentum 
coming into this game now they've had an extra game a huge game that they've won and Donegal off the back of another a disappointing defeat yeah look at Armagh coming in after losing to Donegal <clears throat> excuse me, a point to prove you know like it all points to to, to an Armagh victory and uh, as Kyle was saying the pressure on, on McGinney but like you, you look at the amount of players who has left the Armagh panel over the last couple of years I, I can't really think of anyone bar a retirement or two mm. so like the players are buying into what he's doing and that's the main thing no matter what media says what we say here once they're buying in and they're kicking on th- th- that's the main thing they're holding the whole thing together so a, a, a huge performance and for them to win and, and get themselves through the next round is a, is a huge thing and will be a massive year for Arma if they, if they can get that victory and I, I tipped on goal the first day Um <laughs> You gonna do it again? I, I don't think so. No, I think, <laughs> it, it, look at if if Armagh played the way they played yesterday, but I, I still fear for Donegal having the height around the middle mm. that Armagh won't have the joy they had of winning as much primary ball about around the middle. But if they can bring the energy they brought yesterday, they'll get plenty of turnovers and 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 I really do think Armagh could could kick on. But they have to bring remember, they have to bring I that remember intensity. Being in a coffee coffee shop and um and. Uh, it's like an Armagh Tyrone border a place called the, the Moy where Sean Cabin is from and uh, I was in with, with my wife and just remember seeing Kieran McGinney sit beside me with the, the three three Armagh players it was I think it was uh, Grugan uh, Aidan Falker I'm not sure who the other one was but they were out they must have maybe had training or something but it just struck me you know that this management didn't seem to be on a different page or didn't seem to be on any better than, than the players they were they were out for their breakfast and they were obviously having a bit of a chat about maybe the game, they had a game come up. I was involved with the Tyrone team at the time and I thought it was, it's not something that I would have been doing. So yeah. I just thought it was something, you know, really, really good, the refreshing to see that they were out having a, probably a chat outside of football as well. Yeah, sure, it's good togetherness. And I suppose the other games there, Roscommon and Clare, Mayo and Kil- or Roscommon and Clare, Mayo and Kildare, they're in Crow Park. Is there much need for it in Crow Park? Could they yeah. not have done a provincial? Like I, it's gonna be flat. If they had brought them to 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 a provincial ground, it would have been unbelievable. But yeah. I, as I said before, Mayo were happy to get to, to Crow Park because last time they played Kildare in in Newbridge, they, they lost yeah. the game. You know, so they, they're happy it's there. But as for atmosphere, like even the the hurling final there, mm. so many empty seats, and then you go down and you look at the Munster final, and it's. Different. It's, like a different, it's like a different sport. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. So as much as you want to get playing in Crow Park, sometimes like most of these teams have played in Crow Park enough. Like bring them around the country and, and, and fill the stadiums. Like it's it's there's a, there's many a good stadium there that gets very, very little big yeah. games. So bring them to them games. Like everyone's crying out for it, but look at it could be a, a money thing or that with the GA. You just wouldn't don't be like them. A money no, thing, no. who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I won't be on this again no. now because I said that. <laughs> and Cork and Limerick, it's going to Park, Parky Cueve. There was actually talk below in Kerry that it might go to Clarny if it was neutral venue. Um, would have been a decent enough atmosphere down there, even I think Clarny might be a bit big for it as well. But I think they do on home and away. So at least, at least neither team has to travel too far. I'd fancy Cork to get over Limerick. I just think that the uh, the the beating Limerick got against Kerry and I think Cork with a bit of bit of momentum now maybe a bit of confidence now um I think they'll get over the line there what do you reckon Kyle yeah I, I would be on the same um wavelength as you I think you know Limerick have ha, have come to the fore this year with their footballers they, they've stepped up they got to to Division Two which was really really beneficial for them next year you know playing against those teams will be um, playing against Dublin they'll be testing themselves again so but I do think Cork should have enough to get over the line I think they just have enough firepower up front with Sherlock and Brian Hurley um, they should be able to do enough damage to get Cork over the line but I do agree with you on the on the provincial grounds like I did what I wouldn't be a big hurling man I, uh, I would watch one or two games probably throughout the year but I did purposely tune in yesterday because uh, Thurles is, is a ground that whenever it's packed it's it's something else and um it's just it was class to see that sort of atmosphere. Everybody on celebrating the scores right on the side of the pitch. I, I do think that that's where some of these games should be played. Yeah, and I suppose another news, um, exciting times up in Ulster with the news that Caseman Park is finally going to be built. Um, I'd be looking forward to trying to get up there to a game. Um, it's been a long time coming, so it'd be 
bring a lot of excitement up to Ulster. Yeah, like Casement Park, I, I, I played in it back years ago and it was probably, other than Crow Park or, or Clone, it was probably the best surface. It was yeah. unbelievable. It, it was just, and it was a good enough stadium too, Like, but now what they're planning now is, is outrageous. But it's like, what's the point in building when every big game that potentially could be is thrown to Crow Park, you know? So it's it'd be frustrating. But then again, you have your Ulster games like in Clonus, but then Clonus goes idle. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of big stadiums about the place that are are idle for for too many for too many big games. And Bre- Breffney Park, another massive yeah, stadium. Cro- Cro- Park is Cro- Park's never full anymore, unless you get a maybe a Kerry Dublin in a semi final or an All Ireland final in the football. And you have Parky Cueve, which is incredible, and Case and Park. No one's going to be done in Cro- so. There's no reason why they wouldn't be moving quarterfinals around the place going forward because. Like, Look, we were lucky enough if we've played in Crow Park, but when it's when it's not full or it's only half full or under, it, look, it's great to be there and stuff, but it, it does take away from the atmosphere. Yeah, it, it can't be it can't be the same. Like in, I, I remember club football matches were took out of Breffney Park when Breffney Park was been done, and it used to be any of the big games would be thrown into Breffney. They were all thrown to club grounds. It was electric, like, and that's at that level. Imagine. County players coming in and into Newbridge and, yeah. and into Parky Cueve, it'd be just, it'd be brilliant and and more enjoyment for players, supporters, everything. You know, it's just it, it beggars belief now how they they just keep going. You get lost Park. in Crook Park, I think, very very easy. You know, lucky enough to play on it uh, a number of times, and you, normally with, with Tyrone, it's, it's big enough um, crowds. So if you're going in there with twenty twenty five thousand scattered right throughout the place, I did see some of the hurling. Um, the Kilkenny um, game the, the night before and it, it gets a bit lost uh, it gets a bit eerie you don't hear much of the crowd that's that's what I feel about Croke Park where you know but going back to your point on Casement Park it, I, I love playing there it's just it was shaped um, Cian if you mind it was a bit like a cauldron it was like a bit of a hoop shape the way the the ground went around and it was just the parking along the side of the road of the Town Road and all it, it was it, it was a brilliant atmosphere it always had had that great, um, it's a bit like Clonus Hill. You, you have that, the people you're, you're integrating with the people a wee bit and stuff like that with the buses and stuff park. So it's, it's good to see momentum being changed with there. I think it'll be great for, you know, Anthem football as well to, to have a, a proper home. Yeah. And one more thing I have to mention before we go here at the GR, we're launching the GR Skills Challenge. I took part in it. I was the guinea pig that, that got the ball rolling so keep an eye out on our social media channels Kean here beside me took it uh, took a go at it as well we won't say how we got on but we want you to spend send in, send in your videos to us and we'll see how you get on and at the end of the year we're going to see who has the bragging rights I'll let you in a hint it probably won't be me but I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to send in mine we're going to get you down <laughs> we're going to get you down don't worry but uh, look, that's all we have time for. A big thanks to Kyle Coney and Key Mackey for joining us here again today. And we're looking forward to talk to you all next week about all the upcoming action. Cheers. <laughs>